Are you applying for a new job and want to set yourself apart from your peers? Are you interested in developing your digital literacy skills to help secure your job future? In this episode, I'm going to talk about the top six digital skills employers look for that will put your application on the top of the pile. And later, I will sit down with Emma Sue, the digital training coordinator here at the Leadership Institute. My name is Tiffany Roberts from the Leadership Institute, and you're listening to the Lead Your Future podcast. On the horizon, do you see it? That's the digital future coming towards us. Whether you fear it or embrace it, there's no escaping it. But LI can help you prepare to take hold of it and make it your own. Whether it's creation, analytics, communication, or strategy, the Leadership Institute can equip you for the road ahead. Go to leadershipinstitute.org forward slash training and click digital. Again, that's leadershipinstitute.org forward slash training and click digital. The only difference between being left behind and leading the way is being ready. Hey guys, welcome to the Lead Your Future podcast. If you're enjoying these episodes and this podcast, please click the subscribe button and feel free to leave a five-star rating wherever you get your podcasts. Also, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Leadership Institute and on Twitter at Leadership I-N-S-T. Do you have a topic that you're just dying to hear me talk about? Feel free to shoot me an email at troberts at leadershipinstitute.org and I'd be happy to make that happen. Now on to today's episode. So what can digital skills do for you? Whether you are looking for a new job, a career change, or running for an executive member board seat of a school club, digital literacy skills are highly valued for practical use to advance any company or organization. Even if you're looking to become more valuable and more involved with your current employer, a show of digital strength may help you achieve those goals of becoming even more of an asset to your current employer. Who knows, maybe with more articulate digital literacy, you may even be able to ask your boss for a raise. And of course, we have an episode on that already. The digital age is further expanding into all areas of our lives, including jobs with no high technical knowledge required, making the importance of digital literacy imperative to all career fields. Digital literacy helps solve problems, create new and exciting projects, boost communication and productivity. More than 82% of jobs in the United States require some form of digital skills, and more than half of emerging jobs focus on highly technical areas like software engineering, artificial intelligence, sales development, and customer success, along with overall productivity. First up, we have programming. Let's talk about programming. There are so many reasons to learn coding, such as HTML, Python, SQL, or Java for career professional development. Employers may have shown that they are willing to pay a high dividend for employees with coding and programming ability. Knowing this, you might be wondering if coding is something you should consider learning. Whether you're a business owner, a student, or someone on a job hunt, coding is a skill worth adding to your professional toolbox to allow career flexibility. I know I have HTML and CSS in my toolbox already. One of the most attractive facts about having coding and programming skills for anyone is people with these skills earn significantly more in wages than their coworkers. To give you a perspective, web developers make on average $74,700 a year. Computer programmers make on average $86,500. And database administrators make on average $94,750 a year. To give you more grounding, in 2019, the average employment wage was $53,500 a year. This data alone shows it pays to learn coding. And for the employers that may be listening, if you end up hiring an employee with coding experience, you can save about $1,000 a month just from coding completely in-house. Coding is also important because computer programming teaches your brain to think differently, and it trains you to become an expert problem solver. Employers recognize the importance of self-problem solvers to save themselves time and money. Next up in our skill toolbox, we have data analytics. Data analytics is now a huge priority for companies and organizations because the interpretation of data helps the organization restructure to meet goals for their services or products, which in turn boosts the organization. Right now, 77% of top organizations consider data analytics a critical aspect of overall business performance. Those with data analytics in their toolbox 
on average get paid 50% more than their counterparts. This trend is evident across the board in the technical skills world. Similar to coding, having a data analytics background create further opportunities for career growth and acceptance into a new organization. With data analytics training, you will be at the core of decision making within any company or organization. Being able to take large quantities of data and transform it into meeting is invaluable. Later in this episode, when we hear from Emma Sue, we'll talk about how to get that training in the first place. Next up in our digital skill toolbox, we have social media marketing and search engine optimization, or otherwise known as SEO. With 72% of people in the United States and 51% of the entire world using some form of social media, knowing how to utilize such platforms is paramount to marketing success. Social media is a community-based place for input, interaction, content sharing, collaboration, marketing, and influencing on all kinds of levels. Due to the vast reach that social media has, companies and organizations have a need for specialists to create postings using editing softwares, such as Adobe, along with individuals who know how to utilize search engine optimization, or SEO, and create an overall positive user experience. Using analytic tools, learning how to gain followers, as well as knowing how to create high quality posts to send a message and gain followers is so important to every organization's success. Your ability to navigate the social media landscape is key to understanding the role of social media in marketing brands and businesses. If you can master these things, it will allow your company or organization to take advantage of a social network to help increase brand exposure and broaden customer reach at an in-house cost. Next up, we have user experience. The last top digital skill to add to your toolbox is perfecting the user experience. The user experience is how someone interacts with a website or app and how the user feels while using your product. When you are skilled in perfecting the user experience, you will be able to use analytics to determine how people are using a product or a service. Overall, with some or all of these tools in your toolbox, success of both you and your organization will be launched yards before competitors. Now that we have learned some imperative skills for the workforce, right after this quick break, we will hear from Emma Sue, the digital training coordinator here at the Leadership Institute. Do you want to fight liberal bias on your campus? Have you or your friends witnessed it at school? If so, Campus Reform wants to hear from you. Campus Reform is dedicated to fighting liberal bias on college campuses. You can help Campus Reform in their mission by sending incidents of liberal bias their way. To do this, all you have to do is go to campusreform.org tip. Welcome back to the Lead Your Future podcast, everyone. I am now here with Emma Sue. She is the Digital Training Coordinator at the Leadership Institute. Emma, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. So can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got to where you are today? Yeah, so I am the Digital Training Coordinator here at LI, and I've been working here for about six months now. I graduated in 2018 from the University of Baltimore with a business admin and computer information systems degree. From there, I worked in marketing and communications. Then I ended up working as a foreign trainer for the Walt Disney Company in Beijing. And then I found myself here at the Leadership Institute. That is so cool. I definitely never meet anybody who worked with Disney. I think that's just a cool thing to be able to say that you worked with, you know, Disney of all organizations. (laughs) Yeah, I absolutely had a fantastic time. My main role there was spreading the Disney name and the love of Disney to all of Beijing. So it was definitely a rewarding experience. That is awesome. Now, I, I the reason why I'm doing this podcast in the first place is because I read one of your blogs on our website and I thought it was really interesting because it's something that you know, it's something that people, a lot of people have in the resume, like digital skills, but they don't, it's not something that's really talked about, something that 
a lot of jobs don't ask for it, but if they do ask for it, it's usually they're asking you as it's like a preferred knowledge to have. It's not something that's usually required. So some of these things are the type of things that I'll kind of give you the leg up in some jobs, but some jobs, obviously like coding, it's required, but um, yeah, this is not something that's usually asked for on job resumes, but what do you have any digital skills yourself? And um, so how do you use them in your job today? Yeah, so my background is in computer information systems. I was very fortunate where I had a father who loves everything technology. He loves programming in his free time. And I kind of picked up on that a little bit. Um, in terms of digital skills, I use them in every single role, every single day with everything I've done. It started in university with me learning how to program and me ha learning how to do data analytics data analytics, sorry. And so just having those digital skills has brought me so much success in my life. And the reason I decided to write this article is because I was so frustrated with not having a secure list of digital skills that I found were very useful, but no one else can find this very easily on the internet. So I wanted to write an article that way other young people who are maybe entering the workforce or maybe want to switch careers will be able to know what skills they should learn that are super transferable, definitely give you a leg up on the competition and give you all the resources you need to succeed. So you mentioned this article and we've been talking about it a little bit. This will, The article that you wrote will be linked in the show notes. So if any of you guys are interested in reading um, what she wrote, you can find it there. You can also find it on our website, um, leadershipinstitute.org uh, forward slash news as well. But um, so you mentioned the importance of having digital skills. Are there any in particular that you think are like you know, you have to have these if you're going to kind of the communications or the kind of world that we work in. Is there any that you think are very important um, and to have in your back pocket? Yeah, absolutely. Just looking on the list that I suggested, one of the most important one is data analytics. I originally wanted to major in marketing and I ended up taking a tech direction. And I'm so glad that I did because the marketing world and the world of communication relies so heavily on data analytics to make every single decision that we know and love. For instance, you're looking at those Super Bowl advertisements. No one just has a gut feeling or a whim to make those advertisements. Everything is done based on the data that people have accumulated on what different ages and what different demographics resonate with. And that's how these advertisements are created. It's the same thing with every single campaign that you're going to be on, any single business that's promoting a product, or even you promoting yourself. You can use your own data analytics to promote yourself on social media or promote your own podcast. There's just so many things that you can do to succeed with data analytics. The other one that I would really, really emphasize is communication. Communication is key. Having these digital skills is so valuable. But at the end of the day, you need to be able to communicate your findings with the people on your team and with the people you're going to work with in the future. You can be the world's best programmer. And if you say, no, this is not possible, and just leave it at that, no one's going to respect you because you can't defend your argument. You can't give an explanation. That way, everyday people can understand it. So that's why it's super easy for people who are in the digital world to learn how to communicate with people from all generations and all tech levels. Now, I've had a lot of kind of side hustles, uh, freelance jobs, and I've, you know, I've helped people build their websites. I've helped, I've done freelance where I ran uh, some small businesses, their social medias. And I think one of the most intimidating, most intimidating things, especially for me, is just the data analytics side, like it sounds easy to, you know, be able to guess what, what would work best and at what time, like those things are somewhat easy and you can find that information pretty easily, but becoming an expert at it, I think it can be very hard. And for me, at least it's been very intimidating. Is there, are there any like programs out there that you would recommend or any courses, um, maybe not related to LI, but any, <laughs> any like external courses out there that, um, you could recommend for learning these data, data analytics more in depth? Absolutely. Leadership Institute has some great ones, especially in the digital training sector. We do a lot on Google Analytics. 
Google does have a course that you can get certified through and it's 100% completely free. I highly recommend it. I think I Another tried one. that one. It was so intimidating. I, I had such, I don't know why, but I had such a hard time with it. I think there's like a lot of language that it's just like these weird words that sometimes just don't make sense to me. I think, I think that's why. <laughs> yeah. And they also do lots of little tests in between. So if you're someone who's yes. anxious and you're an anxious test taker, it is not the angle for you. Not at all. <laughs> so the Leadership Institute one is a little bit better in terms of its hands-on practices. You can ask questions live. That definitely is a great resource. Another one that I used before or rather after I started making some social media mistakes is I actually went to Facebook Blueprint, which is the business side of Facebook. You can get certifications through Facebook Blueprint, but I never got the certifications because all of the content is 100% completely free. So I'm not going to pay the $150 to get the certification because it wasn't something that I needed to prove to any of my employers. If you need to prove it, I highly recommend taking the certification test. LinkedIn also has really great certification tests that you can take as well. But it's just a really great resource. There's also so many forums, so many blog posts that are just out there. If you just Google data analytics, you're going to find a hundred different courses. And really, it's just trial and error, finding the one that works best for you. Would you recommend somebody getting certified um, and so they can put it on, a, on their resume? Or do they really not need to get certified and just have kind of experience with it to put it on the resume. So when I was interviewing, if someone asked me if I had a skill, I would say that I did. And if someone asked about a certification, I would say, I can take this certification if it's something that you would like me to have. I do not recommend spending the money just to put it as a skill because you can put it as a skill even if you don't get the certification. The exclusion would be maybe tech-based certifications like C plus or something like that, where maybe in the field, it has a little bit more weight to it. But especially in terms of social media, I don't think it's super important for you to have the certification. So talking about coding, I know I have my own opinion on this, and I will we'll probably agree with each other a lot. But um, talking about coding, there's different, different uh, languages out there. There's HTML, CSS, uh, Java, SQL. And they all kind of sound intimidating to some people. I know I probably never thought in, in any like in any world that I would learn how to code, but I did at one point in my life, and I, I'm actually really grateful for it. But is there they all they all seem very complicated. So is there one language that you would recommend somebody were to learn? And why do you think it's important? Even if somebody is just like, I'm just in communications and yeah, like I build websites here and there, but which one, which one do you think is um, an important skill to have? Yeah, so the first language that I ever learned, and I took a university course in it, was Python. And it was one of the easiest languages to learn because everything is color coded. So it's super easy. It tells you what your errors are. And there's a huge online forum of people who are very willing to help you with any mundane mistake you have. I don't necessarily think it's the most useful when it comes to the real world, especially if you're looking to be an avid programmer, I think HTML is probably one of the most useful ones. But any programming language is going to be super useful. I actually use VBA the most, Visual Basics. It's Excel's programming language, just because that's the need that I had. In every organization, you're going to have different needs. But one of the best things about programming is there's two main things. There's communication that is impacted, and then also it's a transferable skill. It's transferable for any other programming language that you're really trying to learn. For example, if I went into an interview and someone said, oh, do you know how to code using SQL? And I would say, oh, actually, I know how to program it in Python. And because I have these basic understanding of how programming and programming languages work, it will be very easy for me to learn this new programming language that you want me to learn. And the other one that I mentioned is communications. Even if you don't end up being an avid programmer, understanding how your request from maybe your digital team, maybe you want to update your website or update your app or do something along those lines, just understanding the work that it's going to take, understanding how to communicate just with some of those common vocabulary languages in order to really bridge the gap. And that's what's really going to set you apart from being someone who works in digital and someone who manages in digital. 
That is such a great point that I'm glad you brought up about what, like once you learn one uh, coding skill or even any of these digital skills, once you learn one thing, it makes it easier to learn the others. Um, I, I was able to get experience back in college with HTML and that's probably my my favorite one and the only one I will ever learn, I believe, but, you know, HTML and CSS, but I did it through um, Adobe, um, Adobe Dreamweaver. I built my own website with it and that was super fun. Everybody else in class used some like online one that was like way too easy. I'm like, heck, I'm going to go the hard way and do it on Dreamweaver. And I built my own website and all I did was follow along on a um, some YouTuber, he literally just went through the whole code of a website he was building and I just copied him. I could have easily just copy and paste the code he had, but I just typed along with him and I learned so much that way. And later on down the road when I was building my website, there was some issue going on and I was able to think like, hey, I know how to code. So I went into the kind of depth of the website and I was able to just fix it by fixing the code by seeing what was wrong. So you're so right. Once you learn one skill, that can serve you so much further along uh, later on down the road for sure. Yeah, and definitely it's all about just changing the vocabulary. It's like when you learn a new language, for instance, Spanish is really similar to English, especially with how you set up the sentence structure. So all you really need is the different vocabulary to plug and play. And coding is the exact same way. Um, do you have any recommendations for someone who... I mean, they, they're kind of more very broad in their career search and they want to learn digital skills, but they don't know what to start with. Is there a certain category of skills that you would recommend they start at? I think the easiest skill to start to adapt when you're already looking in the business world or maybe you're a business major is definitely social media marketing. That is one of the easiest ones to transition to just because everyone's already using social media and you will find that you understand a lot more about the back end of social media marketing than you at first realized. One of the things that I highly recommend most to anyone who's looking to enter the digital training field is work your side hustle. I know you said you have your side hustles. I, when I first got out of college, ran a food Instagram, a local food Instagram in Baltimore, and it ended up taking off. And I'm not going to lie, we made a lot of mistakes when we were first starting out. We were using the wrong hashtags. We weren't engaging the community correctly. So a lot of the times when you're doing this social media marketing, and especially if you're just doing it in a low stress environment where it's just you're trying to be an influencer, you want to see the <laughs> impact that you can have. It's really all about just trial and error, doing your best. And once you have that trial and error, then you will start learning what other skills you need to have in order to build a better presence. Because ultimately, you're not going to know what skills that you're lacking in or what skills you're succeeding in until you actually try to do it. And I'm sure we'll both recommend highly that having a side hustle is honestly the best way to fail because you're your own boss. If you fail, you fail. And that's it. You're not in, you know, a full time job and you're ruining their social media and getting everybody in trouble. You know, that is such a great way to learn how to fail and learn from those mistakes for sure. Yeah. And any digital expert who says I've never failed, success came so <laughs> easily. They are the biggest liars you will ever meet <laughs> because everyone has made one of those devastating mistakes that you just say, wow, I'm so glad that this wasn't a job that I could get fired from because <laughs> I would have been fired. For sure. I look at my old, some of my old Instagram accounts that I still have. I'm like, what was I doing? Oh my <laughs> God. It's just cringe just looking at it. <laughs> exactly. And so until you do trial and error, there's no way you're going to know how to succeed without failing. And your failures are going to make you the most valued, valuable to future employers because people want to know how you learn. Skills can be learned super easily. It's very easy to go into an interview and say, yeah, I don't have this skill yet, but I'm willing to learn. That attitude, that can-do mentality is what really drives success. Exactly, exactly. Oh, that was so, that was so well said. I could not said it any better. Thank you. Um, before we finish up, I know we talked a little bit about LI trainings. Do you have any other resources out there that you'd recommend? Any books, any websites you recommend um, people look at as well? So, of course, I am going to plug the Leadership <laughs> Institute. 
Uh, the digital training team has been working really hard to make sure that people can get the skills they need for free. So every Tuesday we do a digital download, which is a one hour course where we teach people a very specific skill set that you could use in order to succeed. Becoming a YouTube creator, learning the basics of Excel, cybersecurity, very useful, practical skills that you can put on your resume after you learn them. Outside of the Leadership Institute, I just love consuming podcasts. I love looking at advertisements. Start looking just in your everyday mundane activities and seeing, wow, what was the thought that went behind this? How did this become a product? And once you start shifting your worldview to really analyze the things that you're looking at, you're going to have this whole new world exposed to you. That is wonderful. Well, the, Emma, that's all the time we have today, but thank you so much for coming on this episode. I had a wonderful conversation and I really hope that we can kind of work together more uh, in the future with our LI trainings and, and everything in between. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Lead Your Future podcast. If you like this episode, please subscribe, share, or leave a five-star rating on iTunes, Spotify, Overcast, or wherever you get your podcasts. It is the Leadership Institute's mission to increase the number and effectiveness of conservative activists and leaders in the public policy process. That's why I bring you on-camera TV trainings, public speaking workshops, debate workshops, speech writing workshops, and so many more. If you're interested in taking one of these trainings, feel free to check out our website at leadershipinstitute.org forward slash training. The Lead Your Future podcast is produced and edited by Tiffany Roberts with support from Cody Quinn. Advertisements by Leadership Institute interns. Executive produced by David Fenner and Morton Blackwell. If you want to learn more about the Leadership Institute and see behind the scenes photos, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and subscribe to Leadership Institute on YouTube.